Welcome to Story Hour, a virtual meetup hosted by Wolf and Heron. Daddy, we need to get up. It's the birthday of the guy with the wife with the beautiful bra. The guy is my husband. The girl who squealed this very memorable line is the little daughter of friends from Berlin. And the bra was actually my bikini top that she had seen the day before. And it's actually not a story about the birthday of my husband. It's about my birthday. It's about my 40th birthday. And it was the best birthday in, in my whole life. And it took place in Portugal. But before I take you to Portugal, let me take you to Newark Airport, to the beautiful airport of <laughs> Newark. And I'm sure you've all somehow have been there. Um, this is where I learned we, where we were going. And it's not only the best birthday, it was also the best trip of my life, even though I've been to over 30 countries. But what made it really the best birthday and the best trip was that I didn't know anything about it and I wasn't in charge. You know, my husband told me, I will take you away for your birthday. This is about what you have to back, the bikini top, <laughs> right? And um, I, I just, it felt so free because I didn't have to um, think about anything. And the best thing was I could have blamed him if I had packed the wrong things. So we are at Newark Airport. We approach... Um, I forgot, Portugal Airlines or something like that. I was like, yes, Portugal, Lisbon. I actually thought we would go to Japan. I saw myself in a high-speed train somehow driving through fog, and but it was Portugal. I was really excited, and I texted um, my best friend back in Germany. I was like, it's, it's Lisbon, it's Portugal. You know, my husband had planned this huge trip, and everyone knew that it's going to be a huge surprise. And she was like, oh, that's awesome. you got to eat as many pad thai de nata as possible you know you and she sent me all these tips for Lisbon we get to Lisbon and um, the entrance where we get to to the to the first apartment where we stayed was about as beautiful as the airport in Newark <laughs> we approach like the bell and he says like ring the bell for fifth floor and we we, we get up we get there and we open the door and there stands the friend who I just had texted from from Newark together with my goddaughter and the entire family. And it was just magical, you know, we and, and the apartment was magical too. Actually, it was just the entrance that was as bad as Newark Airport. But um, we, <laughs> we, we get there, we have breakfast together, and we spent this amazing weekend together in Lisbon, my, my goddaughter, the whole family. And it gets Sunday and we're getting ready to, to leave um, the apartment to, to go for breakfast somewhere or so. And um, there is this woman in the, um, in, in the, from, from the reception. She was like, when the others arrive, I need their passports. And I was like, the others? And my girlfriend, Connie, was like, Sonia, got to show you something. You got to come down. And I was like, okay, this was a spoiler. So there must be more people to the party. Um, so we go for dinner. We, we, we spent the whole day. And then I look out of the window. We sit at a table for four. We are the two of us um, in a packed restaurant. But the table is for four, and th for four. And then I see my parents getting out of a taxi in front of that restaurant. So that was the second um, surprise that we had on, on this birthday trip. But actually, the bikini and the bra story um, happened at a house that was also like entrances is somehow a theme here. It was really, again, a situation where we approached <laughs> an entrance like a driveway into a house. And um, my husband was like, this is going to be super special. This is going to be the best part of, the, of uh, your entire birthday trip. And we get there and we're like looking around and it was like a big house, but it was like a little, could have had some love. And um, I look around and I look up and I see this family from Berlin with the little girl on the, standing on the rooftop greeting me. So this was the, the third one. And then over the weekend, it came to 21 people 
meeting me in Portugal for my 40th birthday. And we spent this amazing trip um, together in this house. And it was just full of surprises and love. And we would have almost gotten also on a, on a sailboat, which we had to cancel. But the, the best thing is there is a, there is a German um, line about a, it's in a song, it's about a lake and about a guy who actually can't wait to retire. And it's about orange tree leaves and a path towards a lake and he lives there. And he's, the, the line is actually, I can't wait for my retirement. That's kind of the translation. And we call it the, the lake house, even though it was not at a lake, but it had a little pool. And um, so this is kind of our line. Can't wait for that retirement and for bringing people back together, 21 people in Portugal. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Thank you for sharing your story. Sonia, <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> what did Sonia do well? What should she hold on to? What was powerful about her story? I just love to, I mean, I love surprises too. So just the idea of someone just telling me pack, not telling me where to, where we're going and just all those little surprises along the way. I just love how you peppered the whole story with the little surprises. It wasn't like all the surprises were in the beginning. You know what I mean? Like, it, so it kept the energy and the interest to hear like who else was going to show up, you know, and, and all of that. And I could feel like your excitement actually. There was definitely a lot of, a lot of mystery that we were sharing with you as we were listening and you were inviting our curiosity both like at the beginning with your hook, I started <laughs> starting with that one moment and then going backwards. And then, yes, like this whole time, we're, kind of, we're clear that there's more that's going to happen, but it's what's next, where is the surprise coming from, who's going to show up, helps bring us like on a journey along with you. Thank you. Yeah, I thought um, the, the whole <clears throat> lining it through with the, with the kind of the, the unknowing like the, the visual perception of, eh, you know, like it kept coming up of like, eh, Newark, eh, this apartment, eh. but oh my gosh, you know, what's behind the curtain, you know, that, that whole thing, you know, what's behind the, the crappy curtain type of thing. I also actually, this wasn't a huge part of your story, but I appreciated when you did like this to indicate towards the airport. <laughs> I think we, um, anything you can do to be live in the story, to be like real in the moment is, is great and real in your environment. And that just makes it, I feel, feel less rehearsed in a way and feel like you're more engaging with your audience. So I, I love references to like Newark, or even if you said like from this apartment, we woke up and you know, that kind of thing I think is great. Okay. Anything else that Sonia did? That she should hold on to. What about ideas for experiments? Let me let me add one more thing. Um, I think you. Um, what I felt was that there was a concerted effort on your part to really describe the visuals, um, and it could and it came across. Like I could see, you know, you talked about oh the entrance, right? Or you talk about um, sort of the the visual aspects of your experience, sitting at a restaurant and like turning your head. Um, and so I, like, it was easy for me to put myself there. So I liked that. Experiments, things that she could consider for the next time. Bart. A little, a little bit of <clears throat> um, being as someone who's been through New York airport many times, there's a reason why it's the cheapest airport to fly into in the tri-state <laughs> area. Um, it is a shithole. Um, maybe a little bit more description on like, just a little bit more to give us a taste of like, yeah, like New York airport, total disaster. Like <laughs> this is where everything started. So it wasn't looking good, you know? <laughs> so just a little bit more detail on that for somebody who might not, or, or, or a, a visual explanation of that. So they might know what's going on. Yeah. I'll admit, I actually thought at first that you really did think it was beautiful. 
<laughs> like, I couldn't tell that you were being sarcastic. <laughs> and it wasn't until later where you were like, it was, you know, you actually started, you used the opposite words. Like you were like, oh, it's, it was as horrible as it is in Newark. And I was like, oh, okay. She's on the same page as me. Cause I was like, what? You think it's <laughs> nice? Like I was like, Newark? Yeah. <laughs> and so, and so I don't know, like to, to Bart's point, maybe, maybe set it up. Or if you're going to be sarcastic, be really, really obviously sarcastic so that your audience knows that you're sarcastic. (laughs) I was like, wait, what are we, are we talking about the same? Is she nuts? (laughs) (laughs) I think, I think Sonia. So what was fun about the story is that you were walking us through it, that we were discovering things along with you. And so I wonder if it would be helpful um, for you to also share the information that you don't do know with us so that we know it too. Like something that came in my head was like, how long is this trip supposed to be? Cause you probably had some information and then we can feel like we're a part of the game. If you're like, so he told me that I should pack a suitcase for 10 days with um, summer wear, you know, like what are the details that like, you're using to feed your ideas of what might come so that when we, when we get those puzzle pieces as well, we're like, Oh, and then that's next, next, next. Um, I think that would be something to play around with. Um, I also feel like what I was hearing from you in terms of a theme is like the value of surprise and that being part of what made the vacation slash birthday magical And that was like just so embedded in the story itself that I wonder like if you reflected on, you know, not just that there was a lot of surprises and you loved it, but what about that? Like what feelings that brought up for you and then sprinkle that in like the middle towards the end of the story that might help us really understand like why this was such a powerful vacation for you and why like you know, why maybe I should consider surprising somebody with a vacation in this way. If I want, you know, if they're this type of person or I want them to feel this way, like this is when you use surprises or this is what surprises can do for you. Mm -hmm. I just think you could, you could be, um, add some insight to that because of this experience. Yeah. Makes sense. Well, And I would, I would add to that. Um, because I heard that same theme, Kara, about like the value of surprises. And I also heard a theme about love, right. And like togetherness and the 21 people and the like constantly like being surprised, but specifically being surprised by new people that had showed up. Right. And so like, is it, is it a story about a certain kind of surprise, a quality of surprise? Is it a story about love? Um, and, and just like togetherness and being in a big house together. Right. And, and like that to me, it was, it like, I could feel all these cup pieces and it didn't feel yet like one thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and like, it could be, but it probably would take a little bit more reflection on your part to figure out exactly what that one thing Mm -hmm. is. Um, and then once you have that figured out, you can then take away the sentences like, oh, I didn't have to think about it. Like it was a great vacation because I didn't have to think about anything. Cause that's not actually why it was a great vacation. Right. Like that's, that's distracting. Or like the fact that, um, you know, like you could tighten your com- your context setting up at the beginning. Um, mm-hmm. once you know the end that you're, you're driving towards. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Perfect. Last thoughts for Sonia. I, I was thinking like how you, you started it with that, the thing that that girl screamed and that was like what <laughs> such a good book <laughs> and then it went to oh but wait this isn't this is what the story's about and inter- kind of like announcing what the story's about and i'm wondering if it could be like what the girl screamed like and that was screamed by my friend i think yours your friend's daughter but wait i'm getting ahead of myself i'm at New- <laughs> you know what i mean and then i'm at newark airport or my, my husband told me to pack these things for a trip that i didn't know where we were going or yeah. you know I did, I guess I didn't need, and I understand this because I want to do it too. <laughs> like explain what the story is going to be about rather than just getting into the story. Yes. Yeah. Think, it's an interesting, you, sorry. No, I was going to say it's an interesting um, tension. Very often we want to set up the story by saying what the story is going to be about. 
you know, it's like, oh, I want to tell you a story about my, like the best birthday I ever had, you know? And it's like, eh! you know, like that's actually not, inter- that's not interesting, frankly. Right. Whereas your, your opening, that sentence was like so powerful and you, and you embodied this girl and it was just like, and I was instantly in it and I was laughing because I was like, you know, the lady with the nice bra, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> What is this story going to be about? And so instantly I'm interested. And then somewhere along the way, I actually lost the thread of that opening line. And I, mm-hmm. and I was like, wait, what, you know, now I don't even know. I, and by the end, I don't know that I answered the question as to like, who was it that was said that and how was it connected to your story? I hear what's, what Lynn is saying though, because I, it took me a minute to then to follow, I think is, yeah, you don't want people to be lost. Um, and it does actually in one way, give away some of the surprise. So I think you could play around with what would it be like to keep that as a hook? And also what would be, what would be another hook, um, that's similar in its effectiveness, but that doesn't give anything away. Is it like, you know, Right. My husband um, smacked me with a pillow and told me to wake up right now. You know, (laughs) it's time to go. Like, is there another version of that that is kind of fun (laughs) and striking, but then lets you transition to the opening of the story? Or or you start with a text to your friend. It's Portugal. Yeah. 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 We're going to Portugal. I stood in the Newark airport with a pack, you know, a backpack that I had packed based on my husband's comments, but I didn't know we were going to Portugal until just now, you know, like, I don't know, you can play with, play with different hooks. That's the, 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 for me, I find the hook to be so fun because it can completely rearrange the structure of your story. Yeah. Um, and, and so you can kind of experiment with a couple of different, uh, different ones to see which one actually ends up being the most powerful and which one allows you actually the opportunity to offer the least amount of context. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Very cool. Thank you, Sonia. Thank you so much. Visit wolfandheron.com to find out more about our story hours. <laughs>